Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Delighted to be joined by Celtic and Republic of Ireland International, Leo Connor. Lee, th thanks so much for giving up your time to have a chat with me. No worries, Paul. How are you keeping? I noticed uh, you've got a haircut there. I wasn't expecting to see that there when I first saw you. Did someone get a hold of you? Yeah, I know it's a bit different, but I just got a bit bored one day, so let me let me have a go with it. Yeah, well, it doesn't look too bad, to be fair. I, I actually would be terrified to get my head shaved, so you're a braver man than me, so fair play to you. <laughs> um, well, I got you on anyway. We've had a few people on um, in the last two weeks, or maybe three weeks, since uh, all this pandemic started, but we're getting them on talking about their career. So um, to get the ball rolling, do you want to let me know when you kind of first start getting into football, what was your kind of first moment that you realised of? Oh, this is what I want to do or play. Yeah, I mean, I just, I think I started when I was about four down at the academy down in a villa in Waterford. But I think it was always because my brother was playing football. So I was always going down and watching him train and going down with my mom picking him up from training. So I was always kind of, I always wanted to play. And as soon as I got old enough, I was straight into it and I've never. I've not really stopped since then. Oh, it was, there was never any moment like a World Cup or anything like that that you were like, wow, you know, I, I aspire to be like that or maybe even an Ireland game or a Premier League game or something like that. There actually, I can't think of one. It would, I think it was just, I just loved playing it. Like, I started playing when I was really young and then I just didn't want to stop and then I just, obviously when I was a bit older, I realised that well, I'm actually... I'm I'm decent, like so I could actually do something, do something as a career. So that's when I started like taking it a lot more seriously. But up until I was like I don't know, thirteen, fourteen, it was just purely playing it for the fun, playing it with my mates, just enjoying it. Well, you you said you were at Villa there. Was that your first club then? And did you stay with them kind of as you went along? Yeah, I played. I mean. Um, I think I was four when I started, and I was I played for them up until fifteen when I left for uh, Manchester. Okay, was uh, Jason Malumbi at that club as well? Because it was Villa and Watford. I think he played a bit as well. He was there. He came for a year. I, I think it was just one season he came, and then he went back to his his uh, hometown club. Cap, uh, how do you say? Uh, Capricorn. That's the one. Yeah, I, I can't pronounce it. I tried to, but I can't. I'm not very good at pronouncing it. But um, so I suppose from from Villa, then when when was it you started getting noticed? What age were you when you started getting noticed and you know getting scouts, not uh, spotting you and stuff like that? Um, it was the year before the Kenley Cup with Waterford. We went up to the uh the Macron Galway Cup, and um, we won it. We beat Leeds in the final. And I got player of the tournament. And then that kind of, that's when United actually see me first. So that's kind of where it all started. And what pos what position were you playing uh, at that point? Were you a fullback or centre mid? Or, or were you playing, playing for that tournament? I was playing centre half in that tournament. And okay. I played centre half in the uh, Kennedy Cup as well. And have, have you, you know, I know you're fullback now and you're kind of sent, you're kind of everywhere really, but. Um, would centre back then? Did you play that way your whole way, kind of coming through the ranks? No, um, I've literally been the same since the start. I've played absolutely everywhere, barring goal. I think I've played from my school, my club, my county. Everyone I've played, gone from up front winger. I've played midfield. I've played absolutely everywhere. Okay, well, well, when United came in, was it was it was it United, and then there was nobody else, or was it a case of there was a couple of clubs interested in taking you on trial or anything like that? Yeah, I went to a good few clubs uh, on trial, and just kind of seeing the last year before I went was pretty hectic. I was just kind of going most weekends over the clubs, seeing what was a uh, what was a uh, good like what I what I enjoyed in that, but. I think my heart was always kind of set on going to United, like being being a fan of uh, of the club my whole life. I think 
I, would, I was never really going to go anywhere else. Yeah, so you obviously grew up following United then. Yeah, my whole life. I've been to Old Trafford a lot of times before I actually signed for him, so it was it really was a dream come true to go there. Yeah, what I was going to say to you is, like, if obviously your boyhood club comes in, uh, what's that like to, to know, A, they're interested, B, that you're actually going to sign for them? Yeah, it's quite it's quite surreal, I mean, but I don't think you actually understand it. Like, I was just going over as a 15-year-old, just, just still playing football. But I don't think it's actually now that I've actually left and I've realised, like, not a lot of people get to get to play for that club, so it's a it was an absolute honour in my uh, four years there. And what was the like signing the first contract there? Were your, were your parents with you? Yeah, my parents came. We've got in the other room. We've got a picture framed, uh, of us three, and then Bobby Charlton and Nicky Butt. So it's a it's Class. a proud picture in there. That's deadly. Um. Well, what was it? What was it like, kind of coming through the ranks at United then? You, um, because you would you have been coming through with uh, Marcus Rashford? No, he was a couple of years before me. Okay, but what was it like, kind of coming through the ranks there and uh, learning from the likes of Nicky Butt? Yeah, I mean, it was it was brilliant. All the coaches were obviously like top class, and the football was brilliant. I loved. I loved every minute, of, every minute of it, every aspect of it as well. But um, it was just, it was just fantastic to be there. I loved it. Yeah, you know, kind of off the back then, I suppose your last season with Man United, you were underage captain. Am I right in saying that? Or under twenty three? Sorry. Yeah, one of the years. Yeah, but you were starting to make a decent impression. Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you were brought in with uh, Martin O'Neill. Um, for the senior team, weren't you training? Yeah. So, I suppose from all that, we kind of saying to yourself, "Wow, you know, I'm starting to get really recognised here as a fairly handy player." Yeah, I mean, I thought I was my first two years there. I was up for player of the year, so in my first two seasons, so I thought I thought I was going fantastic, but obviously it didn't go. The way I would have liked it to go, but I still, I still wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have changed anything. Yeah, I think yeah. that I think that's kind of a thing, isn't it? With football, it's it's one of those things where a lot of us kind of can be timing and look. Yeah, definitely. You need, you need a lot of luck in in this game. But as I said, there's a lot of ups and downs, and you can't really get too high or too low. So you just have to try and stay kind of even keel. Yeah, but do you get that mentality from your family? I probably do, yeah. I mean, it's just... You learn as well. I mean, when I was younger, I probably did get too down when I had a bad game and stuff like that. But now it's just like... Obviously, you're still a bit upset, but it's not the end of the world. Like, you have next week, and it's just not listening to people's comments and that. It's just kind of focusing on yourself as you get older. Yeah, do you find that hard with social media? You've been able to switch off. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's kind of where I stopped. I don't have to wear because that's usually where you see the most kind of bad comments. And yeah, it can be toxic, was, alright. Yeah, and I was on it when I was younger, but I've I've deleted that now, and I stay. I kind of stay stay clear from that. Yeah, I think Instagram is a bit more uh, user friendly. You know what I mean. Um, I I'm not mad on Twitter myself. I I if I can avoid it, I will. So fair play to you in that aspect. Um, right. Well, kind of off the off the end of that season, then um, we're going to go into the under nineteen Euros in Armenia, and you were captain for that tournament, and we were missing a lot of players. So what was the mentality like going in there? Because we were missing like a lot of, of, of real top players. A lot of them are in the under twenty ones now. Yeah, it was definitely a strange one. I mean can't think off my head, but it must have been at least about thirteen or fourteen players we were missing. And I didn't actually know where I was going until maybe two or three days before. 
So I had I had Tom on the phone to me every every few days trying to see what the situation was because I wasn't sure if United were going to let me go. But I ended up being let go. So we went out there and obviously I don't think anyone really gave us a chance. But even though we were, we were missing like a lot of players, we still had a very good team. And I think we showed that like getting to the semi finals of a European Championship doesn't happen by fluke. We played good football. Obviously we played a bit a bit counter attacking at times because the heat out there was incredible. It was forty degrees most of the time, so you literally couldn't you had to kind of play counter attacking at times and that really worked to our favour. We had big Johnny up front which helped us a lot. Yeah, well, like, as you said, we were missing, you know, so many big players and going in there, no one really gave us a chance. And, um, you know, it was good, that fact that it was it was televised, so people kind of got an idea of the players that were there. Now, you were playing centre mid. You were playing centre mid the whole tournament there, because Andy Lyons, I, I'm, I'm thinking, was uh, right full for that tournament. Yeah, I play, no, I played... So, in the first qualifying phase, when we played Holland and that, I was centre-half. And then I wasn't at the second one. I was with the twenty ones, and then I played midfield in the in the finals. <coughs> yeah, because you were you were suspended for the semis. Yeah, yeah. So the, you were obviously a big loss in that game. But yeah, the, the likes of Jonathan Afalabi, who will kind of come on to later on. But um, I think it was a good tournament to showcase the talents that we have. And I suppose as, at the same time, a lot of the other seventeen lads. Well, I think two or three of them came up to play as well, Andrew and Matt and a couple of them as well, who impressed with the under-17 Euros. But I think it goes to show the level of, you know, quality work that's being done, the underage level for Ireland. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you have Joe Hodge, who just slipped seamlessly into the team and looked like looked like he'd been there all year. And he was only a, a 16-year-old kid and he played fantastic the whole tournament, so Obviously, it was it was a blow to miss players, but then people like Joe and everyone stepped up, so it gives gives them a chance to shine as well. Yeah, and it obviously gives a lot of hope for the future. A lot of these lads would have seen you getting bumped up, and obviously you getting the Ireland debut again. We'll, we'll touch on that, but um, the likes of yourselves pushing on now. It's it's great to see how much uh, the team, with the Irish team are kind of pushing on now from all levels. You know, we're comp- competitive at all levels now, especially underage. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I th- every, every kind of underage team I've been in now, we've been, we've been up there, qualified for nearly every tournament, if not just missing out. So I think, I think everyone's only starting to realise now, but, as a player, we've known for years the talent coming through is serious in the next few years. Should be very good for Irish football. Yeah, Aaron Connolly said the exact same as you the other day when I was chatting with him. He said the exact same thing. It's like, I think people are starting to sense, kind of see the fruits of the coaching, uh, or just the, the level of coaching that's being brought in, you know, from Jason Donahue all the way up now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Every Ireland manager I had has been fantastic. I had Colin 15, it's Colin O'Brien, then Paul O'Sam. I had Colin O'Brien again. I had Tom Moan one year for 17s with the older age, and then Colin O'Brien from my own age. And then obviously Stephen Kenny now. And they've all been, I couldn't say a bad word about any of them. They've been fantastic to me and they've helped me, helped me so much. You've actually, you're kind of in a unique position. You've pretty much worked with them all the whole way, even Mick, because you were obviously in the New Zealand squad. Yeah, I think yeah, obviously I worked with Jason Dunley as well, but he was Colin's assistant at the time. Yeah, I think I've pretty much I think I have actually worked with them all, yeah. Yeah, I actually didn't know that before we got you on, but there you go. That's it's funny when you look back. Yeah, I think the only one I haven't worked with like as manager is Jim, but obviously now I will. Yeah, well, yeah, well, you would have had him as a coach anyway, wouldn't you? With the twenty-one, so you're kind of you've, yeah, you've yeah, been around him. Yeah. He was one of the assistants, so yeah. Actually, yeah, and you've been around Robbie, and you've been around Damien Duff. Oh, that's mad, actually. Yeah, I've been I've been very lucky with the with the coaches I've had. To be fair. Yeah, well, I suppose 
kind of off the back of that tournament, um, what what was your intentions then to go back to United and make an impression, or what what way were you thinking? Yeah, obviously I thought I had a good tournament, so I was just looking to go back and obviously see where I sanded. If not, try get a try get a low move away. But then I think it was about maybe ten days a week left in the window. And the sound they came in, and as soon as they came in, I thought, "Yeah, I want to go there." It was just obviously as a as an Irish player, you always obviously I support Man United, but Celtic are always there as well. I've been over to Celtic Park a load of times and seen the fans, seen the stadium, the level of play, and the the minute they kind of came in for me, I was kind of pushing for it to get through and obviously it took longer than expected it went all the way down there was only a couple of hours left in left in the window but thankfully we got we got it done in the end was it hard for you to leave man united because i know you're i know celtic and the lure of of of, you know being an irish player the connection with celtic but as well being a man united fan was that hard to leave the club uh, having i suppose put so much time into going there yeah i think the kind of way I done it was, obviously I loved I loved my time there. I loved everyone at the club. Everyone was fantastic to me. But I kind of just took myself away from that, and I made my decision purely based on what was best for for me, not anyone else. What not what uh, just football. What is best for me? Because at the end of the day, it is it is about me. So I had to make the, the decision that was uh, best for my career. Yeah, well, that's a hundred percent, and I think a lot of people, I think a lot of fans as well need to kind of do that as well, is kind of separate themselves from being a fan as and what the player, because at the end of the day, it's it's a career, it's it it is a job as well as it's a passion for yours, it is a job of yours, you know. But mm-hmm. on to Celtic, um, what's that been like going there? You know, you spoke about you know the fans and stuff like that. I've been there, uh, I was there twice this season. And the first time, first game, and first European night, and the atmosphere is unbelievable. You've obviously been in attendance at games and stuff like that. What what have you taken in from it? Yeah, I mean, most most Saturday Sundays is fantastic, but the the European nights are something else. They're they're absolutely amazing, and it's definitely something that I hope to be a part of in the future. And you get goosebumps even even just thinking about it, like. I remember watching the the Barcelona game a few years ago on the telly. Tony Watt. Tony Watt scored the winner there. And that was that was a madness. Even the uh, Lazio games. The Europa League. Yeah, that's when I was at yeah, Julian scored. Yeah, even though it wasn't Champions League, it was absolutely bedlam. Fantastic atmosphere. So that's definitely a dream of mine to play in a European night in Celtic Park. Yeah, well, what's it, what's it been like, um, you know, working under Neil Lennon and Damien Duff? Yeah, I mean, they're fantastic. He's a fantastic manager and a fantastic coach. And obviously, you see, seen he's helping out Stephen now with the senior team. So, he must be a great coach to be getting that gig. But they've been obviously fantastic. I mean, you see the, the trophies they've won, the way they've been performing this season. So, it's just... Every day is just a just a chance to go on really and get better. Yeah, well, what what's Neil Lennon been like as a person towards you? I am, he he just seems like a great fella. To be honest, I I'd say he looks after you quite well. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a very nice person. I mean, he rang me before I uh before I actually made the decision. No, he rang me when I was in the airport about to board the plane, and he rang me and just kind of told me everything about the club or whatever, and then. Because it was a bit of a weird one. I signed, I think, I got back to my hotel room about 12 o'clock that night. I just signed. And I was in the airport 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning going on international duty. So it was a bit of a weird one. But then when I got back from international duty, obviously he called me he called me into his office and he just had a chat and said uh, his plans, what, what uh, he sees me being like and just... Uh, what the club's like that it's a family club and and uh, it was really nice to hear yeah I'm, and I know Jonathan Afalab he's a good friend of yours and um, he spoke very fondly about you before when I had him on the show so it was nice to obviously have that 
link back up with him. You've been with him on international duty, and now you're your club teammates too. Yeah, definitely. That I mean that that was probably the biggest help having having him when I went there. And then we both kind of we both live by ourselves in our in our own flats, but we basically live together the amount of time we spend together. We're never really apart for too long. Yeah, he said you were gonna move in together, but it never happened. That was probably it. If we both signed at the same time, I'd say it would have probably we definitely would have. But it was the fact that looking back, we definitely should have. But it was the fact when I came, he had already got his his flat and all sorted out and all that kind of stuff. So, but looking back at that, we probably definitely should have done that. Yeah, he's a good man, anyway. Yeah, he's a very good man. He's very, he keeps you entertained, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so Damien Duff is going to be involved with Stephen Kenny in the international setup and as well Celtic. You would have worked, or you have been working under him. Um, what is he like as a coach? I've read so many reports about how good a coach he is. So, kind of from a player who's played under uh, his guidance, what's he like as a coach? Yeah, I mean he's a he's a very good coach. I mean he was a world class player back in the day. So. Even just his experiences alone, you could learn so much. But he is a great coach as well, and he's he's still he's still very good at a at football as well. He, he joins in a few times, and he's still he's still definitely got a bit. I seen him on uh, the soccer AM. Was it the you know the drill? He was he was quite good at that. Yeah, I watched. He was to be fair, very decent. Ryan Christie came out. Um, I read reports today saying you know he was quoted saying how good a coach. Damien was and you know just from his accolades alone as a player it makes you want to listen to him even though he's an unbelievable coach yeah I mean I think that's right I mean he's a brilliant coach but I think he could be a terrible coach and people would still listen to every single word he says just the fact that he's done so much in the game and achieved so much Damien Duff was one of my idols. I'm sure you would have heard and seen so many stories about him growing up that he was probably an idol of yours as well. Yeah, 100%. I mean, anyone that, any Irish player that plays at that level in the game is is an, is an idol to you. I mean, John O'Shea, Roy Keane, Damien, all of them. So he's definitely, definitely one of my idols. Yeah, not a bad person to be learning off either, is he? Um, he seems to have that... Um, Real driven mentality, like I think, and I think he's he spoke previously about Roy Keane and how he kind of got that um, determination from him and those standards that he set. He, he he came out and said about Roy Keane was one of the people who kind of set a standard for him to kind of live up to. I'm, I assume he's like that with you in training too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can't at at Celtic. You can't really. You can't slip up. You have to. You have to be winning every single game. So every player, every coach is is at it every single day. Yeah. Well, you know, um, kind of going from Celtic, it's been a bit of a you know, I don't want to say a struggle, but there's been a couple of players ahead of you in the pecking order, and as we spoke about earlier, it can be a bit timing and luck. Um, even at that, though, when you've come into the Ireland under-21 setup, you've been fantastic. Every game you've played, you've, you've been one of the best players on the pitch. Um, what's it like when you meet up with that under-21 team? Because I see is, and I know a few of you, and it's just that bond, that togetherness that you have. You just seem to get on great, and it kind of comes out and shows when you play as well. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of one of the things. The first time we met up, uh, under Stephen, that was one of the first things he said. He uh, said that he wants it. He wants everyone to love coming into camp, to, uh, the bond to be amazing, and I think it is now. I, I think not that we didn't look forward to international break before, but I think even more now, everyone's just buzzing to meet up. Everybody gets on to each other. We gets on with each other. Everyone loves, and I think it's more the fact that everyone loves playing with each other. Like I've done, I don't think I've enjoyed my football more than with that 21s team. Is is that down to Stephen Kenny and Keith Andrews and Jim kind of bringing the, the team spirit or is it just all things combined? 
Yeah, I think uh, it's a bit of everything, to be fair. Obviously, I think Stephen and uh, Keith and Jim, they give us the kind of licence to to uh, not do what we want, but express ourselves. And I think you see that in every game we play, that everybody loves having the ball, everyone's good on the ball, and we create a load of chances. So that's that's uh, that's one of the ma- main reasons why everyone loves coming. Yeah, well, and, and the fans as well, they all love coming to see the under-21s now. Like, obviously, since Stephen's taken over, you know, there's been a real... Uh, demand to watch is like uh, the games are sold out like every time he's playing talent the games are sold out everybody's excited about you know, the future of pretty much everyone in the squad yeah definitely and i think they're they're right to be excited as well i mean the the players we have the the players we have even the players that maybe don't get into the start 11 sometimes it's kind of crazy to think about because they're at their clothes playing week in, week out at first team level and there's people sitting on the bench. So I think the, the strength and depth, I think, is probably one of the things that doesn't get talked about a lot when you talk about our teams. But I think that's probably, one, if not the biggest thing. Like you've seen when, uh, even against Sweden, we had a few injuries in the second half. Obviously, Jason had to come off and stuff like that. But we, people came in and... And we played brilliant in our second half, so it just shows we have so much, uh, so much depth in the team. Yeah, well, I think as well, what was probably yeah. the most notable thing, and the, the, in attitude wise as well, was the fact that well, number one, I spoke to Stephen Kenny. I did an interview with him before the Italy game that week, and he was he wasn't settling for a draw or a loss. He was going there to try and win the game, and then afterwards, obviously, it was it, it was a draw in the end. But a lot of years came off. Uh, I came out sorry afterwards speaking to the media and you were visibly disappointed not to get the win against a very good Italian team yeah I mean if people might think that we're just saying that because it's a because it's an interview because it's a post match interview but if anybody walked into our dressing room after the game they would have been maybe shocked at the how disappointed every single every single player of the staff was that we didn't get the three points because I think I think we had the better chances that game we put it up to them and then we were very disappointed and, and that just says a lot to be disappointed when getting a draw against Italy it just shows how how much of a good team we are yeah and yeah. the thing is that so many of you and Stephen always makes a point of it is before the two long tournament not a lot of players were playing at first team level. They hadn't been play- uh, They hadn't been even kicked the ball. I think with the first team yet. Now, if you look at that squad now, I think majority of you have. Yeah, I mean you've got Dara, Connor, Jason, Jason, and a lot of Nathan. others playing week in, week out. Now, so I've, I think. Obviously, they can perform at their close, but I think the performances at 21's level definitely didn't hurt them, if not helped them, helped them do that. Yeah, well, I think as well, you know, the the fact that they're getting game time, obviously, we have to go back and impress their clubs. A lot of them have, have really gone on to do really well, as you, the players you mentioned there. Um, even the fact that we were missing Aaron Connolly for that game, you know, he went up to play for against George, so we were actually missing him for the Italian game. Yeah, yeah I mean, we've been... We've been missing a, a lot of players. I mean, me and Jason were suspended for one of the games, and we we still got a very good result, got a good win. We've uh, had a lot of injuries one camp, and we still so the depth in the squad is fantastic, and it just shows if one player's out injured or suspended, there's not just one, there's two or three that can that can slip in. Yeah, well, again, uh, it's something that we have, haven't had in a long time, especially as you know. The senior setup as strikers, there's you know five or six there. Like you spoke about, you know the the strength and depth there. You know you got Michael Obafemi's up uh, in the senior team down to twenty ones. Aaron's been up and down. Troy's been up and down. Uh, there's Adam Eda there, who, who who I'm sure in the future will, will uh, make his debut with Ireland as well. There's so much strength and depth there, as you said. Uh, it's exciting as an Irish fan, and I'm sure as an Irish player, you're very excited for the future. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you said the list there. Uh, you could, I think, there's you could probably, probably more. 
yeah, definitely. You could probably put it up against any any other country in Europe, and we we definitely be near the top. I mean, Aaron Troy, Adam Michael, Johnny. I mean, it doesn't really get better than that. And just knowing you have that up front, even if you're having, even if we're playing badly, you just know they can pop up with a moment of brill, a moment of brilliance. Yeah, and the midfield defence aren't bad either, or the keepers, to be fair. Yeah. Well, um, you just mentioned there about being suspended, and I suppose, in a way, that was a blessing in disguise. You got your Ireland debut out of it. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a bit, that was a bit crazy. I mean, obviously, at the time, you're not, you're not happy getting sent off, but, um, it helped me. For, it helped me get my uh, get my chance at and get my chance at senior level, and that's a day I will I will never forget. It's a hundred by far the best moment I've had in football. I don't think it'll be topped, but definitely at the moment it's the it's the best. Well, if we win a World Cup or Euros, it'll be topped. But yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, talk to me, kind of about how the call up came about uh, when you found out and. I suppose that whole moment, because I'm I'm sure that was a a hugely proud moment for you and your family. Yeah, I I, I found out quite late because obviously I was suspended for the first game for the twenty ones. So the the call uh, the call ups had uh, gone out for the twenty ones and stuff, and then um, it was Armenia away. I think the one I was suspended for. So obviously that was a. a very massive uh, flight and journey and that so they said to just meet him in Dublin when they got back so I was kind of all sorted with that I was just training at Celtic whatever and then I think the senior squad was getting a, getting announced I don't know what it was like 2 o'clock or something and then the reserve manager at Celtic uh, told me at about half one that I'd been called up so it was it was just crazy it was a bit of a I didn't quite believe him at the start, but then when it came out, it was just it was just an amazing feeling. Yeah, there was obviously great photos that you you know picture training with the, with the senior team. Um, Aaron spoke about how Seamus Coleman, when he was there, kind of took him under his wing. Was there anyone there who kind of came over to you? Because I think you took Seamus' place in that squad for that uh, New Zealand game. Yeah, I mean they were all they were all fantastic to me. I mean, I was in. Uh, I was in the last last November under Martin O'Neill. Oh, yeah, so I kind of, kind of, yeah. So I kind of knew everyone a bit, but even Seamus wasn't in the squad. But he was, he was in and around the camp, and he was, he was a, uh, he was fantastic to me. I mean, he's a brilliant captain to have, and he's a fantastic person as well. Yeah, and I imagine he was he was an idol of yours as well. Obviously, playing in the Euros and stuff like that. Uh, how well we did and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. It's actually, um, I think I was about seven. All right, I don't know what age I was. I could have been younger. And we played in a little six-a-side tournament in Dungarvan. And my team actually won it. And the winners got to walk out at the RSC. The 21s were playing at RSC, Ireland and Switzerland. And I actually walked out with Seamus. Ah, no way. So it's just it's just madness now that I've, that he's uh it just shows how far he can come out. That was I actually forgot about that and it was just I think my parents brought brought up and I remembered it. And uh you've you've come full circle then in that sense. Yeah, definitely. Well well um, you know, obviously the train and the build up, but then did you know you were starting? I think he announced it in the press conference that you were starting. I didn't know I was starting until whenever the press conference was, he told me that morning. The day before, I think. Yeah, so he told me at breakfast before the press conference, but as soon as I uh, as soon as I got there, he told me that that I would be I would be playing, but I just thought I'd be getting like 10 minutes or something at the end so the start was just was fantastic and I can't thank thank make it off yeah he's a great man I, I think I said this to Aaron as well I was like people say you know he didn't do this 
this much here and there, but I thought he really got the fans back on board with the players, and I think that was really, really needed. Yeah, definitely. I think he was fantastic. I mean, they got some some uh, great results under him, and we still had a very good chance to to qualify for the Euro. So he's done. He's done fantastic, fantastic for the country. Yeah, well, talk me through the game then, because um, obviously you got an assist in the game, but you look very comfortable out there. You know, a lot of people maybe would have, I suppose, stumbled or, or what would you, what would you, crumbled under the pressure. But you seem to be take it to a uh, to a, like a duck to water. So how was it? You weren't in bad company in that defence anyway. Um, to calm your nerves, I'm sure. Did anyone say anything to you beforehand to kind of calm you down? Yeah, definitely. I mean, everyone was just kind of telling me just it's just another game just stuff like that and that's usually how I take the football games I don't really get nervous but when I walked out I was I was nervous I was I had butterflies and everything I would think which is only normal but once I kind of got my first my first pass I think that kind of settled my nerves I got a touch early and then I think I was fine from then on I was just like this is it's another game so it was just just uh, just have to play. Yeah, well, he did look out of place as well. I'm sure it would have helped having Troy starting uh, as well and then Jack Byrne as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, me and Troy have played together a lot, so I kind of, I kind of, we know each other's game. So that, that kind of helped both of us a lot. Yeah, but uh, Jack Byrne's supposed to be quite the joker in camp. Did you, did you come across him much? Yeah, he is. I mean, uh, him and Troy were real mates, so I'm sure there was there was a lot of jokes going on about it. Yeah, well, they're two of a coin, aren't they? Two peas in a pod. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, kind of coming off the back of that, I remember speaking to you, and you were kind of you were hoping to maybe well, you capped off that uh, week with a goal with the twenty ones. Um, twenty ones are flying. Ireland were 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 doing quite well as well. You're kind of um. Going back, you wanted to kind of get in the first team. Since then, that never really materialised probably as, as much as you wanted it. But then you went on loan to Party Tissel. How, how did the loan move come about and how have you found it? Yeah, it was. It came about kind of, uh, kind of early in the transfer window. But I didn't kind of... I don't think I went until around the 20th. But it was kind of me just not wanting to make a a rash decision or anything I wanted to make sure I'd done, I done what was right for me so I kind of I found out all the information I could I spoke to the manager and that and I actually went and watched them before I actually committed to going so I just wanted to make sure everything I didn't want to make a rash decision so uh, I ended up going there and I really enjoyed it obviously it's been cut short now but I had a fantastic time and the club's full of fantastic people yeah, I think it's quite similar to John Johnny's move to Dunfermline. I think he's both just needed to go out there to get some first team football, especially kind of coming up to there was internationals and stuff. Obviously, that since then all the other stuff's gone on in the world. But um, you were really enjoying your time, it seemed anyway, at Partick. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was just good to get get games under my belt. I mean, I've said this before. It's kind of it was kind of hard. People don't understand, but. It's quite hard mentally when you go from making your debut in the country in front of thousands and thousands of people in the Aviva and then you go next week you're playing at the training ground in front of 50 people. Like it, It's it's hard. It, it's definitely hard on you mentally. So it was just, it was just good to uh, get playing games that actually meant, meant something. Well, obviously the other games mean something, but like that people need the three points and the club needs the three points so it was that was good for me well i think what more so what you mean um is you know you're you're basically playing for people's livelihoods when you're going on, on loan to a club like say partick or a lower league team because a lot of them are playing for their livelihoods pretty much yeah definitely i mean every week you're playing for you're playing for win bonuses you're playing for you're playing for points on the board obviously so it means a lot to everyone and the whole club it means a lot to so you just don't want to let anyone down so that was a good learning experience for me yeah um, well you know we don't know when football's going to be back and we can't really kind of 
speculate too much. I was going to go into it a little bit of detail, like kind of what Stephen Kenny is like as a manager, if you don't mind. Um, has he like Aaron Connolly spoke about how he improved Jason Malumbi's game in terms of his, you know, forward thinking. He 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 said Jason was a bit more kind of play it back, or or not, maybe he said not so much a play it back or sideways, but definitely wouldn't have been as forward thinking. So what's yeah, has so Stephen kind of changed much of your game since you met him? Um, I'm not. I'm not sure, really. I think you're probably. It would be better to ask someone else that question. But I mean, he's definitely given me a lot of confidence. And actually, now that I think of it, he did. He after the Iceland game, uh, he sat me down and he was like, obviously, he didn't say anything about the red card because the ball hit my back or whatever. But um, he actually said to me, I think. You need to. You need. You're not crossing the ball enough. You're getting the ball. You only cross it when you get to the end line. You're not getting it out of your feet and whipping it in. You're just going uh, into midfield, and I didn't actually quite realize that. And then I watched the games back, and I was like, "Yeah, I am doing that." And then my next game for Ireland, I actually I got the ball out my foot and whipped it in for uh, Pan Robinson. So he's obviously got a great eye that he's that he's seen stuff like that. Yeah, well, I suppose that, Dan, that was a great ball for Callum, to be fair. It was great to see the celebrations afterwards of yourselves. Yeah, I mean, it was just... I was hoping he was going to finish it because it was it was a fantastic moment and it was actually where I crossed it from was right, uh, right in front of my uh, parents and my family. So it was a great Bad. moment. And just the roar, what's it like on the pitch when the when the roar of a goal goes in? Because, you, you know, you would have seen three that night, I think, but you actually assisted one. But what was the roar like? I mean, it's 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 brilliant. It kind of gives you goosebumps and that, but I don't think... I didn't actually realise the, the kind of magnitude of the roars that were going on because you're kind of focused in the game or whatever. But obviously, I watched the game back on telly and you just you kind of hear it. You hear it a bit more, but I don't think you actually quite appreciate how loud it is like during the game. Yeah, I mean, well, kind of from from being in, in, within the crowd and stuff like that, and um, you know, especially as I said, Mick got the fans back on board because it was a long period where it was just the, the noise wasn't the, what it should be. You know, in previous years, you would have got a great atmosphere. So I think Mick really got that back, and, and then playing yourselves and people. I don't think Mick. That's the credit for giving yourself, Troy, Aaron, uh, I might be missing it, Jack, um, all debuts. Because a lot of people said he didn't give you the chance, but he gave you all your debuts, you know? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, again, I can't thank him enough for that. I'm sure Aaron and Troy are the same. People gave him a, a bit of stick about that. But I mean, that's that's three, three uh, teenagers he's gave debuts. A lot, a lot of other international managers they don't give any, so he deserves a lot of praise for that. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's good though as well to start getting yourselves in young and kind of introduce you to other players in and around the squad. And I think now the fact that you know, unfortunately, Mick's gone, and there's nothing anyone could do about that. But there was going to be a gradual kind of period where Steve, Stephen was going to take over. The fact now is, if you can actually get into the Celtic team, who knows this time next year. Um, the way football works, you could be looking at maybe getting into the Euro squad if we get past the playoffs. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's that's obviously the aim. So I just have to hopefully whenever football gets back and we hit the ground running, get a good get a good kind of pre season in and just have a good season and you never really you know you don't know what can happen. So hopefully. Uh, well, Lee, I just want to say a huge thanks for giving up your time. Uh, brilliant insight to your career so far. No doubt you're only getting started. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me. No problem. For anyone watching, uh, make sure you give uh, Lee a follow there. His uh, socials are underneath his picture there, as you can see. Uh, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to check us out on all good podcast platforms, the list there is in front of you in the middle there. So thanks very much. And we'll speak to you guys soon.